Okay, hello everybody. Today we'll be learning about effective nuclear charge and uh, Pause. Uh, Okay, hello everybody. Today we'll be learning about effective nuclear charge and atomic radiuses and anomalies that exist within uh, ionization energies and electronic affinity. Okay, let's start. First, we have to define what uh, uh, electron affinity is. What elect what uh and the, the effective nuclear charges? Basically, an effect, effective nuclear charge represented by by something is represented by uh back. something called something called my bad my bad. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how to pause it. Something it's called not. represented by <laughs> Zeph. <laughs> What is Zeph Aziz? And Zeph means Zeph means effective nuclear charge. Tell me more about it. A zero. So basically to find the Zeph of any atom, you first take the number of protons, you subtract it by the number of core electrons. Basically, the core electrons are basically like you know if you have a lamp. What's a lamp? Is like if you have a light bulb, say, say you have a light bulb, you know, bam, with light, and then you have a lamp shade, it's like this, maybe. right? So the core electrons basically act like a lamp shade. They basically they act like the lamp shade. Of an of an atomic. Basically, you could imagine the light bulb as atomic as an atomic nucleus, the lab shade as the core electrons that surround it. So all the valence electrons, since the core electrons want to repel all the core electrons, like you know, if you're looking into the lamp a lamp shade, yeah, we know. You, if you're looking at into the lamp shade, you're not going to see the light as bright as it, as if you took the core electrons away. So just like the valence electrons, they they're going to be repelled away. They're going to be repelled away. From, but because of the core electrons, they're going to prevent the core, valence electrons from from like becoming a stable uh, electron configuration, just like the noble gas configuration. So these are you could like the valence electrons would probably be like around here outside the core electrons, and they're the ones usually involved with reactions and stuff. So basically, the core electrons are you know because the valence electrons are the outermost part of outermost part of any the energy level the outermost part of an of an atom the highest like, energy level as is yeah which which is the, like and you would usually you would you would get a clue that this is the core electron this is the valence electron because the valence electron they would have the highest principal quantum number in an electronic configuration like for example if you write the electronic configuration of maybe uh, sodium and A, which I already wrote. Give me the piece of paper that I wrote in. Give me the piece of paper that I wrote in, please. One is two. I'm so is one is two. Say it to me, Matthias. One is two. One is two. Yeah. Two S two squared. Two S two. Two P six. Two P six. Two P six. Three three S one. The core electrons are so the highest principal quantum number of this uh, electronic configuration is 3s1. So 3s1 is the valence electron. So we could label this the valence electron. So anything outside the valence electron, we would label the core electron. So basically, this 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6 are the, the are the core electrons in this electronic configuration. So if we let's see, get, get this out of here, you know what I'm saying? You know, so basically, if you want to find the effective nuclear charge, you subtract, you take the number of protons, which is the Z number, atomic number, and you subtract it by the number of core electrons, and you would get the Zeph of this electron, of this atom. The big key is the Zeph of this, so you count the number of uh, core electrons, which is 10, which is, okay, 10, right here, and the atomic number of, of sodium, which is 11. Which it's is 11. 11. Which is 11. 
I'm so 11 you, minus 10 is positive. He won't listen to it's me. Positive one. He won't listen to me. So each electron in this, each electron in this atom would feel an effective nuclear charge of one, meaning like it would affect, it would feel as if there's only one proton that's, you know, that's no. that's getting it closer to the nucleus. Right. Okay, maybe that's. Thank not you very much. This is the first part of this video. Thank you very much. Have the a nice second, day. the second part is about the atom. Okay, now we're back. We're so back. if you if you write the, the electronic configuration of chlorine and then you figure out the number of core electron you know the number the atomic number is subtracted by the number of core electrons you would get plus seven just like i did with sodium the example i did with sodium so basically sodium would have i mean chlorine would have effective nuclear charge of plus seven okay <laughs> and sodium would have an effective nuclear charge of plus one so basically this is what you have to know the more the the more the higher the effect the effective nuclear charge is the more the electron will be pulled to the nucleus so just knowing that which which atom would have the bigger radius would have a bigger atomic radius the, the sodium the sodium atom or the chlorine atom oh, well oh, the oh. answer is sodium sodium will have a bigger radius well, because the chlorine atom, all the electrons will be pulled much closer and tighter to the to the nucleus than the sodium atom, which has a which has a plus one atomic re, atomic effective nuclear charge. Thank you very much. This is Father Academy signing out. <laughs> See you in the next video. <laughs> okay, we're back. Now my friend over here has a question. Please ask me the question. So, which one, which one has the biggest radius? Cl2 minus S2 minus K plus. You mean Cl minus? Because Cl minus has a, Cl, a, C, a chlorine atom wants very much to become close to the to the noble gas configuration. Would it, and then since it's only one column away from the noble gas configuration, it would want a one minus charge means it would want to gain one electron to be close to the noble gas configuration. So thank you. Uh, sorry for that mistake. Now to move on. The question was which has the biggest radius. So he asked chlorine minus <laughs> and uh, something uh, negative two two so minus sulfur so two minus and potassium so plus. So what you must notice about this, about these atoms, is that all of these atoms are isoelectronic. Meaning, if you write the electronic configuration of each, they would have the same, they would have the same number of electrons. So if you have the same number of electrons in atoms, that means you take the highest. Yeah. So that means the highest atomic number would be the smallest. Would have the smallest radius. Break down the atomic. So the atomic number of Potassium is 19, 19. Atomic number of sulfur is 16. Atomic number of chlorine is 17. So since potassium has the highest atomic number, since potassium has the highest atomic number, then potassium would have the smallest radius, and then chlorine would have the second smallest radius, and sulfur would have the biggest radius. Thank you very much, and this is the Carl Academy. I can even see. Hello, we're back at Paw Academy with Dr. Aziz. Uh, can you please talk louder so people could hear you? Okay, we're here with Dr. Aziz. Okay, we're here with Dr. Aziz, if you can't hear me. Okay, so the radius of an atom is proportional to its ionization energy. Is it directly proportional or inversely proportional? It's directly proportional. It's inversely proportional. Okay, okay, let's have an argument. Because as the atomic radius gets smaller, the ionization energy would, would get if an, larger. If an atom is small... As the atomic radius gets smaller, the ionization energy If the atomic radius is small, then it's hard to pull like an el electron out of it since it has a greater attraction. Because the distance is smaller than an atom that has a big radius which has greater distance, so it feels less of an attraction, so which is easier to pull apart. And we know that 
ionization energy. Just type it, Matthew. You could just type it. Okay, ionization energy. Type it, just type it. Oh, God. Type it. Ionization energy plus an element plus an element x is equal to 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 its x how do you do that thing to the power of you could just no. write it after uh, you sit okay this will be charge of positive one Plus, we have the electron. <laughs> so, this is the equation and energy plus an element equals the element plus one plus one electron. Plus one, one. Electron, because oh. that's what we get. We pull out an electron. This, what's this one? Oh, that, that's oh, yeah. x plus one. So basically, it's x plus one means that it, it gained one electron, right? x plus one means that it gains one electron, right? No, it, yeah. it means that it's ionization state. Yeah, it means it's a positive uh, cation, right? Yes. And then it has a, a plus, can. and it has an extra electron in it. If you didn't know, this wasn't. It's a cation, since it loses one electron. And this is as far ionization. Thank you, Dr. Paul, for helping me. Hello.